where Christ Jesus will reign supreme, where love and peace will ever be, where grace and truth will find no place. Give us a home, give us a peace, give us a place where Christ will reign. Give us a home, give us a peace, give us a place where Christ will reign. You are listening to Praying Parent Prayer Group, 3PG Family Radio Broadcast. At 3PG, we are committed to helping parents take spiritual responsibility for the overall welfare of their children. We hope this episode is a blessing to your family. Here is your host, Olumafin Kende Benjamin. Today is the beginning of August 2020, 4-day 3PG prayer and fasting big event titled Abba Father 8, God Works with Covenant, Part 2. And we are celebrating the third anniversary of the covenant of West. God bless you as we take part in it. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, Amen and Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we say thank you. It's been three years now, three years of your mercy, three years of your grace, three years of praying and receiving answers, Three years of the covenant of West. Thank you, Abba Father. We have not found you to be unfaithful. Rather, you have performed your words and uphold your promises. Thank you for the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the spirit of grace and wisdom. Thank you, Abba Father. Father, we surrender to you afresh. Help us to separate and dedicate to you anew. Bless our homes and families with health and bless our children. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your name. For we ask and receive in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. In this edition, we shall be considering the topic title Abba Father 8. God was with Covenant Part 2, celebrating the third anniversary of the Covenant of West. And our focus will be on the subject This is my covenant. This is my covenant. And our text is taken from Isaiah 59, verse 21. Isaiah 59, verse 21. It says, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, says the Lord, from henceforth and forever. This is the covenant of West the Lord gave us as a group of praying parents and as a ministry by reason of his spirit upon us. He said, My words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth. And this we have found to be true in all our prayers days for the third year running now. That is the covenant God gave us with a promise of continuity for as long as there is day and night. He said, My words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy sea, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, says the Lord, from henceforth and forever. On the Friday, 14th August 2020, it will be our third year anniversary as a group of praying parents. It is a collective time of celebrating who we are as a group, reiterating and reminding ourselves of what we are called to be as individual families and as a collective family of praying parents. It is the most important season of our life as a family of God. It is a time we celebrate and renew the basis of our work with God and services to families as a community of praying parents. Where purpose is unknown, abuse is inevitable. Once the value of a thing is not known, maximizing its use becomes impossible. We have been called and selected from diverse backgrounds for a reason. Just like Abraham, we did nothing to deserve his call. It was his prerogative, his mercy and grace that found us, qualified us, and gave us his covenant, the covenant of ways. It is his covenant sealed by the Spirit, 
he has placed upon us as a group of praying parents that is meant to reflect his grace and mercies in all our marriages, in our homes and families. This we have been running with for three years now. It is three years of unveiling and understanding his mind for us. Three years of building the foundation upon which our community of praying parents and all homes and families within it we find strength and stability in an aging world of confusion and fear. We have found comfort, peace and rest more than anything else working with the covenant of West. That as long as we remind him of his promises, our prayers will find favor before the throne of grace and mercy. That is the covenant. It is our constant confidence that while we pray according to his will, he hears us. This we do not only because it is written, but because with us is an understanding that we are in a league with divinity, Yahweh the God of Israel, in a covenant or ways that any time we pray, he listens and he hears our prayers. He did not call us alone, but as long as we stay within the tenet of his agreement with us, the covenant is for us and for our children and their children's children in a perpetual generations of kings or people. It is in the spirit of this covenant that we have encouraged ourselves. We have been schooled and learned in righteousness for three years now, a manner capable of helping our understanding of our work with God and passing same to our children, that they in turn may pass same to their own children after them, that the covenant always may be effective and effectual in all our generations forever. We are covenant carrier. We have the life of His Spirit in us. We don't just pray because prayer is good and it is a divine command to pray, but most assuredly we pray because we know we cannot be refused. For He says, Whatsoever ye ask in my name, that I will do. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. This we are assured of, according to John 14, verse 13 to 14. John 14, 13 to 14. We are not unaware of his promise for us who believe, as it is written, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Romans 10, verse 11. Romans 10, verse 11. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For faithful is he that promise, who also is working out and perfecting his will in us all. It's been a highly rewarding journey of faith, power on the promises of the covenant always. We have spent these three years planting seed of prayers, watering our vineyards with faith, daily praying for our families and for our children in particular by names and peculiarities. We didn't boast of having the perfect formula for praying, but with us is the secret of effective prayer life that guarantee entrances tailor after the mind of the Spirit of Christ, who constantly whisper the mind of the Father, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts whenever we appear before Him in prayer. When we pray, we mention the names of our loved one and address their peculiarity and needs in the name of Jesus Christ, one after the other. Then we step back in confidence that we are heard and in faith and watch the Father fulfilling His will in us and in all our children and in our homes and families. It is three years and counting and we have not found this to fail because the covenant always cannot fail. For with us are better promises based on a better covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ that speak better things than the blood of Abel or any other blood that has been offered in sacrifice all over the world combined. There are prayers we have prayed and we have seen results while some are fruiting as we speak and many more are waiting to manifest for he is faithful who has promised. Once we pray, we know we are heard. It is our belief that nothing is impossible in prayers and the only impossible situation is a situation not reported to God in prayers. This has been our driving force in our online prayers converging from different corners of cities, towns and countries all over the world at 11 p.m. every Tuesday night. Please join us online at 11 p.m. this Tuesday as we have been doing every Tuesday for the past three years for a special time with the Lord as we rejoice before Him 
and commit the safe keeping of our children and families to him again and again as our manner is. Praying Parent Prayer Group as a community of praying parents is anchored on two very important scriptures. One is foundational and the other is operational. And it's upon these two scriptures, this word of God, that we anchor all other Bible promises and covenants and run our lives and family within the tenets of the words of these scriptures. The first of these is Isaiah 59 verse 21, which is our text, which says, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy sea, nor out of the mouth of thy sea, sea said the Lord, from henceforth and forever. For us, the words of this scripture is foundational to all we do as a group of praying parents. As a matter of fact, we do nothing except on the promises of the spirit of this words engraved on the table of our heart. It is the basis for all we do as praying parents, and it is upon this we have and we are celebrating the covenant of words. The second scripture is operational. It reflects in the timing of our online prayers 11 p.m. on Tuesdays and in the monthly big event, four days special prayer and fasting as a group. In Lamentation 2 verse 19, that's the scripture. Lamentation 2 verse 19 it says, Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the worship, pour out thy heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands towards him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger on the top of every street. This too we have done and still doing, raising our heart's cry in the night. In the beginning of the worship, pouring our heart desire like water before the face of our God. Lifting up our hands in deep intercessory prayers for the life of our children and for everyone under our spiritual roof by names and peculiarity. And because we come from different backgrounds, different cities, country, and time zone, instead of 12 a.m. Nigeria time, we chose a uniform time zone for all of us, and Jerusalem, being the mother of us all, was agreed on as our uniform time zone. That is how we come about 11 p.m. Nigeria time, which corresponds to 12 a.m. Jerusalem time. And the Bible says, this is my covenant. This is my covenant. Those were the exact words which God told Abraham in Genesis 17 verse 10, when he spread out the nitty gritty of his covenant between him and Abraham and his seed in a perpetual generation of faithful men and women. He told Abraham in Genesis 17 verse 10 to 11. Genesis 17 verse 10 to 11. He says, This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Verse 11. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. And for us, using those exact words, the Lord said in Isaiah 59 verse 21, As for me, this is my covenant. It must always be his covenant, not ours. We are only called to enjoy that which the Lord has perfected and preserved for us and all us with us. He says, This is my covenant. We then, says the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, is word he has put in our mouth, shall not depart out of our mouth, not out of the mouth of our children, not out of the mouth of our children's children, says the Lord from henceforth and forever. That is what we call the covenant of words. Abraham removed the first king to enter to the Abrahamic covenant, that by him a new generation of kings or people can start from him. Likewise, under the covenant of grace that he has given us in the covenant of ways, there is a need for removal of the heart for skin, as he has promised in Ezekiel 11 verse 19. Ezekiel 11 verse 19, it says, I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. Remember in Isaiah 59 verse 21, it says he has put his spirit upon us. Yet again in Ezekiel 11 verse 19, it says, I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh. That is removing the foreskin of the heart. 
and Ezekiel 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36 26 it said the same thing. A new heart also we I give you, and a new spirit we I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart, I will take away the false skin of your heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. In other words, I will give you a new heart. What's the impenetrable difficult layer of flesh stone that represents our old Adamic self under the old covenant we have had with idols and idolatries and that stony flesh, that stony heart is torn off and discarded by the help of the Holy Spirit? Though, of course, this won't be without the sacrificial pains of lust, self-glory, self-worth and pride. That is where separation and dedication comes in. Then as a prince and prince with God, a new generation of spiritual kings or people can start with us when we have lost our self-glory, we have lost our pride, we have lost that fleshly self, that pride that is pop up inside of us. Then with us, a new generation of spiritual kings or people can start just as God has promised. Once we get this, we can never be the same again. Removal of the first screen is painful and difficult. It is a priceless sacrifice for Abraham and his seed to endure the cut or the crude knife or sharp stone or the medieval world that is placed upon their private part just to seal an agreement with God, the God of the Abrahamic covenant. God values sacrifice, priceless sacrifice for the sake of the kingdom just to preserve the covenant, especially within the ambient of the family. Separation is sacrifice and dedication is commitment and both are priceless sacrifices before God when done to perfect our side of the covenant. Once the heart gets reconciled through separation and dedication to God, sanctification takes place. And at this point, just like Abraham, after the removal of the false king, you will lose your ability to move without God. You lose your ability to fight and run your life at a peer pleasing to you. Now your battle and fight are God's battle. Now you fight for the sake of the kingdom. You lose your pride for the sake of the kingdom, even when it promises no immediate personal benefit for you. It is no longer what you will or what you want. It is the covenant and the God of the covenant that is now the most important in all you do. You don't just fight domestic battle just for the sake of winning again. You fight for the sake of the covenant. Once the first skin of your heart is removed, you become gentle. The old you is dead. Humility takes over you and faith sets in. A new you is born that no longer fight for its right, but for the prosperity and the perpetuity of the covenant. At this point, your marriage and all vital relationship will flourish in peace. You are at rest despite the regency. Why? Because you are now a prince with God and we separate from whatever will rob you of that privilege. You are one with God because you are in covenant with Him. You become invincible and impossible to defeat because God is now with you. Where you have failed before, the enemy will no longer exert himself upon you. You are now with God by covenant. You are God's, and the Bible says, Ye are God's, because with you is a covenant of heaven with you. This was the exact position Jesus was as a prince with God, and the Jews tried to stone him when he declared in John 10, verse 30. John 10, verse 30, he declared, I and my father are one, because we are in a league, we are in a covenant. Whosoever a man is in covenant with is one with such. That's why they call man and his wife one. Because they are both in covenant. When you are in covenant with demons, you are one with the devil. And when you are in covenant with God, you are one with the Father. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. And the same is the fulcrum of his prayer for us. In John 17 verse 21, John 17 21, Jesus emphasized that they all may be one. As thou, Father, I in me, that was in prayer for us, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. When we possess the covenant, it become one with God in fulfillment of that prayer, Jesus prayed in John 17, verse 21. As a covenant carrier, you are driven by the tenets and the spirit of the agreement God had with you. For us as a group, 
it said, My word that is I put in your mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, not out of the mouth of thy sea, not out of the mouth of thy sea, sea said the Lord, from henceforth and forever. In Isaiah 59, verse 21. Isaiah 59, verse 21. This is my covenant, says the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge and understanding. It is what you know, you understand. The spirit of grace and mercy, which is the spirit of the law. The spirit of peace and tranquility, which is the spirit of the fear of the law. The spirit of revelation and understanding of spiritual mysteries. The spirit of forgiveness and love and the spirit of the fear of the law within the family. The spirit of cancer and mind, strength for good health and strength for service. All traceable to the seventh spirit of God in Isaiah 11 verse 2. That is God's mind for us according to Isaiah 11 verse 2. It is mind of God that his spirit is upon us to reflect in us through all these seven spirits and seven spiritual dimensions as a group and in our individual lives and family in all our children by right of covenant. Where any of these seven specific spirits is missing, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge and understanding, the spirit of grace and mercy, the spirit of peace and tranquility, the spirit of revelation and spiritual understanding of spiritual mysteries, the spirit of forgiveness and love, and the spirit of cancer and mind, wherever any of this spirit is missing, the joy and the blessings of the covenant will be incomplete. These seven spirits help us to understand the mind of God, perceiving and to know the relevant promises and word of God suitable for every moment and season of our lives, especially during sacred moments of prayer. Since it is the spirit of a man that understands what is inside the man, same is God, the spirit of God, upon us, once effective and activated in this seven dimension I just mentioned, expresses the mind of God for us and through us and our children forever. That is why we sanctify ourselves, separate from all entanglement, and dedicate ourselves to God and to the covenant of words in studying the scriptures and standing on its promises in the place of prayers. As princes and princesses with God, we are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Therefore, as royal priests, we sanctify ourselves, we separate ourselves from entanglement of the world and dedicate ourselves to God so we might enjoy the fullness of His Spirit in the seven dimension He has proposed for us. We sanctify ourselves not just for our sake, but it's for the sake of our children and loved ones, just as Jesus did, and set us an example to follow in John 17, 19 to 20. John 17, 19 to 20, Jesus said, And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through the truth. And for the sake of our children too, just as Jesus did, we will sanctify ourselves, separate from the world, and dedicate ourselves to God through His truth. Verse 26, Neither pray I for this alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their ways. And of course, our children and those around us must believe in God and the promise of God through our ways. That means we must, by the tenet of covenant, be operating consciously with the time effort under the influence of the seven spirit of God, as mentioned already. You can be operating in this seven dimension of the spirit and not have the right ways and relevant promises by time and utterances in the place of prayer. You can't operate in this seven dimension and be unknown and respected in the spirit, the seven dimension of the spirit of God, as he has promised to us as a group. As a priest with God, one with the Father of grace, your words carry power like God because his spirit is upon you and his word is known in your mouth by station and right or covenant because his spirit is upon you manifesting these seven dimensions. And his word is now in your mouth, and by station and right of covenant in the mouth of your children and their children's children. When you understand this, the need for separation and dedication as a prince or princess with God become very real to you, so that you may manifest his grace 
in this seven dimension we have mentioned. This all, the covenant and the promises therein, are not just for us. They are for our seed, our children forever, in a covenant of sort. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant. With them, says the Lord, my spirit as is upon you, and my word it shall put in your mouth, it shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of your seed, not out of the mouth of your children, children, says the Lord, from henceforth forever. So it's not just you alone, it's a covenant of perpetuity for your generations as well. There is more and deeper revelation in God that we are presently enjoying. Don't stay on the level of asking and receiving transcend blessing. Ask for more, search out for more. Desire the full manifestation of the seven spirit of God upon you and your children. Ask for the perpetuity of the covenant. Ask for the spirit of wisdom. Ask for the spirit of knowledge and understanding. Ask for the spirit of grace and mercy. Ask for the spirit of peace and tranquility at home and in your life. Ask for the spirit of revelation and understanding of spiritual mysteries so you won't walk and grope in darkness. Ask for the spirit of forgiveness and love. Ask for the spirit of cancer and mind, strength with God and with man. Where these are in operation, the word of God cannot be scarce from such hearts and families. This is a covenant of ways. The Lord wants us to begin to enjoy. In this, all trances in prayers are guaranteed and answer to prayers are sure. They are all ours by right of covenant. If we sanctify ourselves as a living example to others and for our children in particular, and we walk in the consciousness of the covenants as princes and princesses with God, God in turn will do his part and expand the grace of his spirit upon us and upon our children and keep his covenant with us and with us if we begin a new pattern of experiences powered by the holy spirit in us and in all our generation forever discarding the old negative experiences and pattern we have been characterized with in our families amen please pray this prayer with me father expand the manifestation of your spirit upon me and in my lineage and let your word have a perpetual place in our heart, in our mouth forever, from today. And may you begin a new pattern of precious and better experiences in me and in my children, and in their children's children, in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. May the covenant of words work for you. May you pray and prevail like a prince. And may heaven have respect to you and to your sacrifice of prayer now and always through Jesus Christ. And may God by you raise kings or people in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen and Amen. If you don't keep your family under the covenant of grace in Christ Jesus, no one will. Whoever you to and dedicate yourself and family to, God or devil, the servant or the same, your children will be. You must separate from one and dedicate to the other. May God everlasting covenant of mercy and grace, love and truth be true in you. And your family for all generations, Jesus, for all generations in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up his cousin upon you and give you peace. May God put his name upon your children and bless them. Amen. May God manifest his spirit in this seven dimension in you and in your family and in your children as you seek to walk with the convent with the tenant of the covenant of words, and may you enjoy the same and your generation forever in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. I believe you have been blessed. It's been Praying Parents Prayer Group Christian Ministry, 3PG Radio Broadcast. Join us same time on this same station next week for prayer, counseling, and inquiry about the group or on today's topic or to join and participate in our free online prayer conference. 11 p.m. every Tuesday from the comfort of your room. Kindly call or send SMS or WhatsApp message to 081-340-16069. 081-340-16069. Or you can visit at Upper Room Counseling Unit, Suite 47, Praise Plaza, beside Rano Filling Station, New Ife Road, Ibadan. You can also email us at 3pgprayingfamilies at gmail.com. And you can also visit our website www.3pgchristianministry.org 
for more family-oriented Christian materials that can make you the kind of parent you are called to be. Until next week at 3 pg we are committed to helping parents take spiritual responsibility for the overall welfare of their children. <laughs>